Ow! What the? What's this? You can never escape the past. Oh no. Welcome to the Kaibo Q Show. If you're new here, I review movies, video games, and sometimes video game movies. We took a look at the Sonic the Hedgehog movie in a previous episode, and it was a decently entertaining family adventure movie. A far cry from the downright awful video game adaptations we've had in the past. Well, today we're going to check out Sonic's lifelong rival. And I'm not talking about Dr. Robotnik or Dr. Eggman or whatever name he's going by these days. I'm of course talking about Nintendo's Super Mario. When he's not performing incredible jumps, fighting Bowser, or being annoyingly great at every single sport in the world, you can find him sleeping and dreaming about pasta. Ah, spaghetti. Ah, ravioli. Yes, we all adore that lovable Italian stereotype. He's arguably the best and most iconic gaming mascot ever, starring in hundreds of titles, some of which are highly regarded as some of the best video games ever made. The Mario formula of inspired visuals, colorful worlds, memorable characters, and innovative gameplay all helped to set the high standard that all video games to this day strive to reach. Well, too bad he also set the standard for terrible video game movie adaptations. This is 1993's Super Mario Bros. movie. Yes, the very first live action video game movie ever. Now, I'm not going to suffer through this chain chomp sized turd alone. So I brought in my friends, Haru and Sunflower. Thanks for having me on. I play video games and I make video essays sometimes. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Why are you staring me down, man? <laughs> I, I I don't want to alert you, but there's a there's a sunflower and it's it's talking. Well, I'm a professional gamer. For those of you who don't know, I play competitive Mario tennis. Now, as a professional gamer, I'm sure you know how awful video game movies are. I think I've watched two video game movies in my entire life. What's the worst one you've seen? Worst video game movie? Mario. Get really? that shit out of here. <laughs> it's just there's no competition. It's just Mario is the worst one. Well, uh, let's uh. Let's get this over with. Swing your arms from side to side. Come on now, let's all go do the Mario. The movie starts with a classic Mario theme. So hey, at least there's something from the games. Unfortunately, it goes downhill from here, almost immediately. Seriously, what the heck is this rejected Microsoft Paint Flintstones intro we're looking at? You know, it just don't get no better than this. Yeah. So we find out that the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs actually sent them to an alternate dimension. A giant meteorite struck the earth. Goodbye dinosaurs. But what if the dinosaurs weren't all destroyed? What if the impact of that meteorite created a parallel dimension where the dinosaurs continue to thrive and evolve into intelligent, vicious, aggressive beings? Oh boy. We then cut to the present, and by present, I mean 1973. In the intro, there was a lady with an egg, and she just drops it off at a, I don't know, is that a monastery? Wait, I don't remember there being so much religious imagery in Mario. Well, there was actually that nativity scene in Super Mario Bros. 2. The egg hatches and a human comes out, but then we find out it's Princess Daisy. <laughs> 20 years later, we meet our two main characters. Mario, played by the late great Bob Hoskins, and Luigi, played by John Leguizamo, who does his best Zordon impression. That's right, these two famous Italian characters are being played by a British actor and a Hispanic actor. Also, why doesn't Luigi have a mustache? Shaved it all off, for charity. We find out that the Mario Brothers are a plumbing company and they have to answer a call to fix a broken dishwasher. You know those iconic Mario quotes like, let's -a go and wahoo. Well, we don't get any of that. We get come on. Oh, come on, 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 come on. The Mario brothers then meet Daisy, who is now all grown up and needs a ride. Anyway, for some reason, the movie thinks it's a good idea for a young woman to step into a creepy stranger's van. He has offered you a ride, and if it would help you out. Please, step into the van. Why does this feel like the ominous start to a true crime documentary? Daisy was never seen again. She goes on a double date with Mario and Luigi, and if you're wondering why there's such a big age gap between these alleged brothers... Why would you do without your big brother, huh? 
The movie clears everything up in this scene where we learn the true nature of their relationship. Mario here brought me up. He's been my, my mother my whole life. Hey. <laughs> All right, my father. My father. He's been my father, my uncle, my brother, everybody. Okay, actually, that didn't help at all. Did they just say Mario's Luigi's mother? He's been my, my mother my whole life. Hey. We also get introduced to these two henchmen who are tracking down daisies. Now anyone would recognize these dudes. Yeah, so their names are Spike and Iggy. For reference, this is what they look like in the games. What an uncanny resemblance. Let's go back to Luigi and Daisy who are now hanging out in a sewer. Ah, I can't think of a better place to spend your first date than in a pool of human feces. As romantic as that is, everything is ruined by Luigi's pipe bursting prematurely. Unfortunately, Luigi isn't too experienced at laying pipe. So they head back to his apartment to get Mario to help. We need your help. Strap your bone on, kid. We're going in. Oh, come on. That was the perfect opportunity for him to say, let's -a go. It zoomed in on his face and everything. Yeah, you remember when Mario, before he went to save the princess in uh, New Super Mario Bros, he goes, strap yourself in, kid. <laughs> come on, Luigi. Luigi. Come on, we're going in. Spike and Iggy knock out Mario and Luigi so they can grab Daisy just for them to regain consciousness in literally the very next shot. They find Daisy, who is now somehow trapped in this dimensional portal in this rock wall. Before she fully sinks into it, they manage to grab her necklace. Luigi jumps in to save her, and so does Mario, and uh, and uh, uh well, just watch. How the heck did that happen? They end up in the Spawn movie for some reason before descending into a post-apocalyptic city called Dino Hatton. And this is where we spend most of the movie. Unfortunately. Wait, I'm sorry, is this supposed to be this movie's version of the Mushroom Kingdom? This looks more like something out of Judge Dredd than anything from a Mario game. This alternate dimension is ruled by the main villain of the movie, King Cooper, played by Dennis Hopper. And why does he sound like Dr. Evil? See you later, alligator. So King Cooper's master plan is to merge their reality into our reality, but to do that, he needs the rock from Daisy's necklace, which turns out to be a piece of the meteorite that created this alternate dimension in the first place. Too bad the Mario Bros have it. HA! It isn't too long before they get held up by a little old lady with a cattle prod who steals the necklace. A woman in red then shows up, grabs the necklace, and throws the old lady off the bridge and into a car below, where she starts maniacally attacking the driver. The woman in red then flies away using her rocket boots. All that really, uh, really happened, huh? And by the way, this woman is supposed to be Big Bertha, the big cheap cheap from the games. If you ever wanted to see a close-up cleavage shot of this giant fish, then here you go. And also, uh, get some help. The Mario Brothers, or fathers, mothers, I don't know, in their moment of defeat are then approached by a random man who tries to serenade them to get their spirits up. Who is this character, you ask? Well, it's none other than... You know the law, Toad! That's right, that's supposed to be Toad. See the resemblance, people? Ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, you can't arrest a guy that's just singing a song? You're damn right we can. This is Cooper's America. Mario, Luigi, and Toad are arrested and brought to King Koopa, who demonstrates his Evolver de Evolver machine on Toad. So, this machine pretty much has the ability to rapidly evolve or de evolve the subject's mind and body. Is he going to transform into the Toad that we know and love? Nope, he turns into a Goomba. Go Goomba! Well, this movie's sad, ugly excuse for a Goomba. I thought the Goombas looked awful. It looked like they were in constant pain and agony. They have these small heads and enormous bodies. You ever played Dark Souls? Well, you see, you can make your head really small in Dark Souls and make your body big. So, I think that's the reference there. Here's the thing about the costume effects and animatronics. They're actually pretty solid. Most of the costume creatures look believably gross and expressive. Yeah, I didn't actually mind most of the animatronics. They were pretty well done. It's just that they barely resembled any of the characters from the games. Unfortunately, not only do they do such a poor job at representing the source material, they also fail at crafting an engaging and likable world. 
For as decent as the animatronics are, it doesn't cover up the fact that the world the characters are occupying is not only ugly, but just disjointed and messy. There's no sense of consistency or logic tying this world together. Now, compare this with another Bob Hoskins movie, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where cartoons and humans coexist. Yeah, as nonsensical as that could have turned out, the movie did a good job at setting up the rules and following them throughout the story. So despite all the wacky cartoony things that happen, you're still able to know what the stakes are and immerse yourself in the world. In Super Mario Bros, it seems like they're just making up everything as they go along. Like weird things just happen for the sake of it. Anyway, Mario and Luigi make a daring escape where we get this weird scene. Hey Mario, look at this. These little mushroom things on the fungus. Hey, look at that. What is that? Goombas, come on, let's go! Well, look, it was trying to give us that thing! Yep, you heard that right. The fungus tried to give Luigi a bob -omb. More on that later. There's also a part where Mario and Luigi are hacking into a, a car, and Mario's like, Whoa, Luigi! Whoa, Luigi! How'd you do that? And Luigi says, Cause we're sitting on my butt all day playing video games, that's why. Now, for those of you who don't know, that's actually a reference to Mario Bros. the video game. For those of you who don't know, the movie was based off the video games as well. Yeah, to be honest, uh, I wouldn't know that from watching this. Oh, and Mario also says like, now this is driving. Which was actually another callback to Mario Kart, where Mario drives a car and, and creates a six car pylon in the process. They drive off a cliff, but they are saved from crashing by some more fungus. Hey, the fungus just saved us. What are you talking about? It was my driving that saved us. It wasn't your driving that just saved us. That tunnel just sneezed us out, and then this giant booger caught us in there. That's what saved us. Oh, come on! We then cut back to King Cooper, who's having a mud bath, where we get treated to this essential piece of dialogue. Do you know what I love about mud? It's clean and it's dirty at the same time. What the heck was the point of that? Did, did he just... Ugh. Never mind. While Daisy's in captivity, she meets Yoshi. And he's honestly a pretty awesome animatronic effect. Yeah, I mean, they did lean more towards making him a photorealistic creature as opposed to the cute design from the game, but it works. Well, please tell me he at least has this long tongue. That's probably his most recognizable trait. Okay, that was horrifying and gross. I regret asking for that. Be careful what you wish for, man. King Cooper decides to get the upper hand by giving his minions Spike and Iggy an evolutionary upgrade. It turns out he can just crank up his Evolver Devolver machine to advanced? Wait, if King Cooper had the means to instantly evolve his minions, why did he wait this long to do it? All his other soldiers are dim-witted slow Goombas, which means he de-evolved them. But why? If he wanted to rule the world, wouldn't an army of more intelligent, evolved creatures be more effective? I mean, heck, de-evolving your soldiers makes them dumber than the regular citizens. Okay, but do you know what this movie's idea of being hyper-evolved is? Well, you can now only speak in random big words. Quite an agreeable transmogrification. More like a um, transfiguration. Ah. Mm. Did a five-year-old write this? There was no continuity with that. It just like they got smart. Excuse me, that hardly seems logical, does it? Perhaps we should stay and formulate our own strategy. Tete -a tete. And then got dumb. Go forward! Now course! And then got smart again. I think that proposal would mutually benefit both our parties. Yeah, as somehow these super intelligent minions get outsmarted by Mario and Luigi. They then decide to team up to get the rock back from Big Bertha, who has it around her neck. Mario has to head down to the old club and woo her to get it back. This scene, it's honestly painful to watch. I don't understand, this is for kids. Yeah, can we just skip this part? The Goombas crash to the club, and the fucking boys pop in. <laughs> Here we go! Incredible, incredible entrance, and big red cheap cheap lady Bertha gives them jump boots. <laughs> That's how Mario and Luigi jump so high. Mario and Luigi then enter Trump Tower to rescue Daisy. Now, if you thought the rise of Skywalker had a big twist, get a load of this. It turns out Daisy's father is a fungus. May I present to you your father, 
This is my father? Yes. Wait, so who's the mother? Is it Mario? He's been my, my mother my whole life. Hey. The fungus throughout the movie actually helps out the Mario brothers, and they don't realize that the fungus is actually, well, Daisy's dad. They just think, wow, this place looks like shit. In hindsight, every time some fungus saves the Mario brothers from certain death, it's actually Daisy's dad looking out for them. Remember when the fungus tried to give them a bob arm in the prison? That was Daisy's dad. Or when fungus saved them from dying in a fiery explosion after driving off a cliff? That was Daisy's dad. Oh, what the hell are they doing to Daisy's dad right now? On their way to the top of the tower, Mario and Luigi come across a 30 foot drop. And this happens. How are we gonna get across? To make it. I, I gotta go feel. I'm gonna jump. Come on, cause somebody's gotta do it. We don't got no other choice, right? Luigi, this I, is I gotta go this is not miraculous practice! Luigi! I'm flying, Mario! I'm flying! Okay, how dumb are the riders? So Luigi jumps and gets his belt stuck in a hook, and their genuine collective conclusion to this is... I'm flying, Mario! I'm flying! You're flying? No questions asked. These morons, these supposed capable heroes we're supposed to be rooting for, have 100% accepted that they can fly. Never mind the fact that they can literally see the hook. Never mind the feel of Luigi's belt hoisting him up and digging into his skin. Let's ignore reality and readily accept that human flight is suddenly achievable. There's even this big reveal shot of the hook, as if the movie actually thinks it's fooling us. Luigi then convinces Mario that he can fly too if he just has faith in himself. All you have to do is trust, come on! Just do it, come on, just have faith, jump! Come on, Mario, come on, I just trust, jump, come on! Yeah, okay, I'm convinced that Luigi knew that he was on a hook all along, and he just wanted Mario to die. He wants to kill his bro brother's mother, father, whatever he is. Mario's like, oh, if my brother can do it, I can, so he just jumps off and starts falling, and then Daisy's dad sets up a fungus trampoline for him, and Mario's straight up bouncing on Daisy's dad. Like, full on. <laughs> So, remember when Toad was turned into a Goomba? Well, he now has the important job of serving Daisy her prisoner food. For me? I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat anything with a face. I am kinda hungry though. Any chance of a plate of steamed vegetables? <laughs> Oh, and if you think that wasn't undignified enough, if you think this movie had enough of dragging poor old Toad through the dirt, he winds up on the wrong end of a flamethrower. And it's honestly pretty terrifying. This scene hurt me so much. First, they disrespect my boy by turning him into some weird ass looking Goomba, and then they set him on fire after he tries and gets Daisy some vegetables because she's a vegetarian. They did him dirty. Yeah, and they tried, they tried to burn him down. It was horrifying. He was screaming. I've never heard screams like that in my entire <laughs> life. Mario and Luigi finally get to Daisy, who introduces them to her dad, the Fungus King. Listen. I know this is gonna sound a little strange, but I want you to meet my father. Well, it's an honor to meet you, sir, and a pleasure. And I just, I just want to thank you for all your help. They split up so that Mario can rescue the other captives, who happen to be some other missing girls from Brooklyn. They then come up with the ingenious idea to slide down a frozen air vent on a mattress. So this is like a reference to when he slides down that penguin slide with Mario that penguin. And what happened to Luigi and Daisy, you ask? Well, let's go back and see how long it took for them to be captured by the bad guys after Mario left them. She's in the Goomba barracks on the 51st floor. Come on, my home. Twelve seconds. My god. Twelve seconds for them to literally run straight back into the hands of King Koopa after Mario leaves. I know I shouldn't be this surprised at the idiocy of this movie when we're this far into it, but somehow it's still finding stupid new ways to sink even lower. Hey, yo, Koopa. Wait, 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 hold up, wait, hold up. Don't you dare brush over that like it was nothing. What did he say? Hey, yo, Koopa. Hail Koopa. So is this movie trying to convince us that the Goombas are this dimension's equivalent to the Nazis? They look nothing like- Oh, I stand corrected. It's finally time for the epic face-off between Mario and King Koopa. 
King Koopa has a flamethrower fireball gun, and he doesn't shoot it at all while Mario is arming a bob to send towards him. Yeah, look, something you may have noticed is that no one in Super Mario Bros. is smart. And so if King Koopa wants to invade Earth by merging the realms together, how is he gonna do that if his whole army sucks ass, and his weaponry sucks, and he has freaking dodge and cast for vehicles, and... What, a, an evolving, de-evolving thing? A bob -omb falls through a crack, falls onto the road, and then just walks up a wall. Where we learn that even in this twisted alternate dimension that, need I remind you, was created 65 million years ago, product placement is still king. Oh yeah, that's where the ad placement is. It shows that it's wearing Reeboks. That's how it does it. Dude, Reeboks are wild in the Koopa Kingdom. So King Koopa's assistant, Lena, gets her hands on the rock, which she reinserts into the meteorite. This merges the two dimensions together, but kills her in the process. Yikes. Man, she sure makes an impression. Someone just died, Luigi. Look! It's Tower! Uh, I, I... Don't say anything. Okay, so King Koopa uses his de-evolver gun to turn someone into a... Monkey! And somehow that amuses everyone. Okay. Mario pulls out a mushroom and says, And if you thought that this was the point Mario's gonna eat the mushroom and grow big, you obviously have too much faith in this movie, my friend. Instead, the mushroom grows big. What a twist. What a twist! Luigi and Daisy manage to remove the rock from the meteorite, separating the dimensions again. Mario and Luigi then use devolver guns on King Koopa, and hey, at least it makes him somewhat resemble the character in the video game. Oh, it's... Hideous. They continue de-evolving him until he turns into some primordial ooze, I guess? And King Cooper is finally defeated, freeing Dino Hatton from his tyrannical reign once and for all. And they all live happily ever after. The Mario Bros return to our world, and Daisy chooses to stay in this nightmarish hellhole for some reason. We cut to three weeks later, where Mario and Luigi are back in their apartment. They said the thing. Ugh, I don't care anymore. And this is when Daisy comes busting back through the door. Luigi, Mario, Daisy, you gotta come with me. I need your help. What, what, what's wrong? You're never gonna believe this. I believe it. You do? <laughs> Believe. Yes, that was the big stinger. The sequel hooked to a sequel we thankfully never got. That was 104 minutes of pure torture. I I would rather burn in the fires of Bowser's castle than sit through a second movie. And we're finally done with this freaking movie, thank goodness. This was probably one of the most confusing and misguided movies I have ever seen. Sure, I give them credit for, I guess, trying to put their own spin on the Mario world. Because honestly, I can see all these elements working in a better movie. Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo could have easily shined in these roles. And the darker, post-apocalyptic version of the Mushroom Kingdom could have been a daring but fun twist. But unfortunately, it's all in the execution. All these far out crazy ideas could have worked if this was a cohesively written and better directed film. Almost nothing in this makes sense. Nothing was well thought out. And don't get me wrong, I love a good offbeat wacky movie. This should have been a lot of fun. And apart from one or two lines that did get a chuckle out of me. Stand by for special bulletin. Mario, look! You look terrible! Most of the jokes fall flat. Even if you did separate this from its source material, it's still an absolute mess. It's not funny, the action scenes are horrendous, and it's just an ugly movie to look at. I completely understand now why this is considered such a stain on Mario's legacy. And if you think about it, this movie was responsible for starting the so-called video game movie curse. And just for that, I give this movie a score of a backflipping Mario. It's a pretty well-known story that Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo were constantly drunk on the set because they hated being a part of this. And honestly, I don't blame them one bit. Heck, I wish I was blackout drunk through this whole experience, just so that I'll never have to remember a single thing from this awful movie. Screw this movie, and screw you Q for making us watch this. I give this a score of a Bob-omb wearing Reeboks.
Overall, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty scared watching the whole film. I thought this movie was kind of ass, but it was like the ass you can look at for a little bit. Yeah, no, you see a little bit of fungus dripping down. You're like, that's not a, that's not what I need. But you know what? I give this movie a. Hey, come on, come on, Luigi. Come on, come on. <laughs> Luigi. Come on. <laughs> A big shout out goes to my special guest, Sunflower. He's an absolute champ for suffering through this movie with us. So please send some love to his channel where he does these fantastic video essays about your favorite video games, including Mario. He puts a lot of hard work into his content, so please go check him out. And as usual, you can also head on over to Haru's channel where he also does some really great video game content that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video, everyone. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to see new reviews from me. In the meantime, check out these other videos I did, including a review of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Take care, I hope everyone's staying safe out there, and farewell.